Hello, my name is Irais Ortiz Carabeo. I am a first generation college graduate and I'm currently working at the UNM School of Medicine in the Department of Pathology. My research focuses on very specific mechanisms that could give insight as to why current cancer therapies are being as successful as they should be. And overall, the findings of the research that I do could ultimately lead to improved cancer therapies. Um, I didn't always know I wanted to be an engineer. As a matter of fact, when I was in high school, I hated science and math until somebody challenged me to explain why I hated those subjects. And it wasn't so much that I hated them, but I was scared of them. They were foreign subjects to me. And it was a high school teacher who talked to me about engineering and a world of behind the scenes of technological advancements. And I just knew I wanted to be a part of it. So I pursued my undergraduate degree in chemical engineering, and I'm currently finishing up my master's in biomedical engineering. How is what you do like or unlike what you thought your profession would be? So when I pictured engineers or scientists, period, I kind of pictured what you see in movies where they're constantly just working at a bench by themselves, you know, white lab coat, glasses or goggles. And honestly, I didn't think that I'd be collaborating as much as I do. Um, one of the things that surprised me the most about my job is that I actually work a lot as part of a team. I do have a nice balance where I have um, a project per se that I get to say what happens or what doesn't happen in it. But if I do get stuck, I'm not alone. I can always reach out for help. And I think that's the biggest difference between what I pictured and what I'm actually doing um, is just being able to form part of a team when I thought I was gonna be all on my own. <laughs> is there any times you were really challenged and if there were, how did you overcome them? Well, I wanna say that like my biggest challenges in life came before my engineering career, before I even knew I wanted to be an engineer. I think the most challenging time of my life came really early on. I was actually five years old when my family migrated to the States and I didn't speak English at all. And I was put in a fully English speaking school and I couldn't communicate even the basic things. Um, now it's funny to share. I used to be super embarrassed about it, but I used to use a boys bathroom. <laughs> they didn't have the little pictures on like outside of the restrooms. So I would accidentally like use the boys bathroom and I would always think like, wow, this is really weird. Back in Mexico, like girls had their own bathroom, boys had their own bathroom and here everybody just uses whatever. And until a teacher came out and pointed it out, she was like, no, honey, you need to be over here. Um, that was really like traumatizing then. And, and I ended up picking up the language really fast. So now when I face challenges, it's really like, my brain automatically goes back to like five-year-old me, you know, and it's really hard to get bogged down now thinking that if I was five years old and I could overcome this huge uh, language barrier, essentially, like why wouldn't I be able to overcome what happens now? What has been your funniest job mishap if you've ever had one? Oh, I've had plenty. Um, but my funniest one, I would say, uh, was when I just started working. Um, they taught me how to do cell culture and cell culture is essentially like taking care of cells, right? So you do experiments and like cool stuff on cells, but you have to take care of them, have to keep them alive, have to keep them happy. So you keep them happy by like making sure they don't like get crowded because they do duplicate and they grow and um, you want to make sure that they have enough space, that they have nutrients, that they have all that good stuff. So one time, um, I like looked at my cells and they all looked really weird and half of them were dead and I was like, oh my goodness, what's going on? What did I do to them? And I actually realized that I hadn't put in their supplements, so like their food, so I essentially starved myself <laughs> to death and <laughs> I just couldn't figure out what was happening. So then I called someone over to help me and they were like, oh, these cells look like maybe they're not fed and I realized that, yeah. Hadn't, I had not given them food. So that makes me think twice about having kids now because, you know, <laughs> if I starved self. So. Do you have any advice for someone starting out in your field? Um, just considering the fact that engineering is ever evolving, uh, I would say don't be afraid 
to admit that you don't know something. I think I did that a lot at the beginning. I wanted to just, you know, go along in classes, not pretending like I knew, but very scared of what other people would think if I stood up and said, you know what, I didn't understand or I don't know. So advice for somebody starting out in this career is it's okay to not know and it's okay to stand up and say, I don't know. You're studying something that's, like I said, ever evolving and there's nobody that has all the right answers and nobody should have all the right answers. That's why you're studying it, right? That's why you're going to school. So don't get in the way of your own learning and don't be afraid to stand up for yourself and just say that you don't know something because that's the way you learn. Somebody else. Is it hard for a woman in your line of work? I would love to say that it's not, but it is. I personally didn't expect it to be um, just based on what you hear, uh, the whole field of engineering being mm, primarily male dominated. I was lucky to be part of a class that had a really good ratio, but there was still very condescending professors and very condescending peers who um, did point out the fact that being a woman wouldn't essentially help, I guess, in many aspects. But um, although it is hard, you have to be very grounded in what you want to do and who you are. I feel like if you have a strong foundation, nobody can shake you, right? So you constantly have to remind yourself of why you're there. And yes, there's a lot of people that think that just because you're a woman, um, you are worth less essentially. Uh, but those are like, I don't know, his like- Traditional facts. Tradition, yes. Like people have convinced themselves because that gender is a determining factor in success. And I just feel like we are very close to having enough girls to be convinced that that is not true. And as long as you're convincing yourself and you're reminding yourself every day that that is not true and it doesn't have to be true for you, then it doesn't have to be that way. And when somebody does come along and make you like, tr or at least tries to make you feel inferior, then you can remind yourself of that. And it's sad that we have to remind ourselves of that, but just like to go back to the question, is it hard being, yes it is, because you have that extra step, you know, that you have to keep reminding yourself that you're good enough.